this is Black Scout Survival, and today I got my good friend Chance Sanders, my partner in what's perceived to be criminal activities, and I'm just being funny because we're going to talk about the ethics of lock picking or lock picking for a survival situation. And uh, you guys may be familiar with Chance; he's been on on here before, and he uh, also has a lot of things going on within the urban survival realm. And uh, Chance, just tell us a little about what you got going on right now. Well, I just finished up doing a spot on the Survival Summit. Um, I have my DVD out, Surviving Civil Unrest. Um, right now we're building our school over in Georgia, which hopefully you'll be coming out and doing some classes for us. So a lot of cool things going on right now. But um, yeah, one of the things that came up in that, that class that I did, or the, the lecture, I guess you'd say, was uh, lock picking, and people were... Anytime you talk about lock picking, you always get this feedback where people are saying, well, I would never pick locks or that's stealing or whatever. And I, we talked about it and um, I figured something we should address and, and figure out what it is exactly uh, our thoughts are on it and what other people's thoughts are on it. And I do think it's something you need to come to grips with and make that decision prior to. Uh, you don't want to have a bad situation happening and on top of that trying to make a moral have a moral dilemma that's right so so what are your thoughts my, I guess my biggest thing is that in in the world uh, people are going to do crazy stuff no matter what and a lot of people you know think of lock picking as a negative thing um, you know but a lot of people think firearms are a negative thing especially what was going on in, in America right now you know and uh, weapons or firearms you know can kill people but you know People are going to, crazy people you can't stop. So, you know, you have to, if you're going to have a skill set like lock picking, you really need, you know, you need to have a good moral compass, basically. But, you know, you also look at knives, like, you know, your, your pocket knife or survival knife. These things can kill people, too, or, or yeah. cause bad things. It can, you can slash wheel tire, vandalize with a fair seam rod. You can start fire, burn out houses, vandalize sure. things. It, so everything is, can be used in a bad sense. And I don't understand, and people don't understand it's a skill set. It's something you actually need to practice. Um, there's a lot that goes into lock picking beyond just opening a padlock. And that seems to be in the survival world the limit that people are taken to. It's, hey, here's how to open a padlock, and then that's it. Um, yeah. That's, you know, that's not going to keep, <laughs> you're not going to be, you're not going to be going and pilfering, you know, <laughs> hospitals just because you can pick a padlock. There's other locks, and we'll get into that later. But, it's no different than owning a set of bolt cutters or owning a sledgehammer. Um, like you said, you can use it for whatever you want. The, the, the goal is to, in my opinion, is to eliminate as many obstacles as I can. That obstacle may be that I'm, I'm going to the property, the bug out property, and lo and behold, I don't have the key for the cable that's going across. I don't have bolt cutters. But in my wallet, I got lock picks. It's a master lock. I can open it in two minutes, sometimes faster than that. So that right there gives me more options. It doesn't mean I'm stealing from anyone. It doesn't mean I'm doing anything wrong. It's just I have another tool in the toolbox that even, is, is good to have. Even in our world today, like, you know, this week, actually, uh, Sunday, I believe it was, my my in-laws they've been out of town mm -hmm. uh, on vacation and they they wound up locking themselves out of their house so my wife called me and asked me if i could go over there you know and i locked their door and i did you know it was late at night they would have had to pay um exponential amount of fees for you know being late at night you know yeah. after hours to get a locksmith to come out there and waiting they'd already been in the car 11 hours whereas i just buzzed over there popped a lock for them so they could get in you know it's like to me survival a lot of people think it's only like bushcraft and, and just regular like fire making and, and shelter building skills. To me, it's not that. It's, it's everything I can possibly learn that could possibly help me. Yep. You know, even if it's welding, you know, things, these skills may come that, uh, if, especially if the grid goes down, I may need these uh, skills that aren't perceived as survival skills. And lock picking, you know, and I've tried to, you know, preach that, especially in that article I wrote for America's Survival Guide magazine, I tried to, you know, lay out what are the real potentials of using lock picking in a survival situation. And it's, it's you know, I'm not saying I'm going to steal people's stuff because, I mean, me morally, I wouldn't do that anyway. I'm not going to take from somebody else, you know. Things would have to get really sour for, well, for me to do that. There's you know? a difference in taking from an individual. I know some people subscribe to the, 
the AR-15 uh, survival manual, which is I've got an AR-15 and therefore I will survive That's by right. taking by force. And I definitely don't subscribe to that. Um, what I do look at though is things that could become abandoned. Um, sure. Look at the freeways uh, when they had the big ice storms and stuff. There was people's abandoned cars. Now, there may come a time when you know for for a fact that the owner of that vehicle is no longer on this planet, and you need that vehicle, and you're looking at it, and your family's there, and you do not have the skill set to get that vehicle started and going. It could be something as simple as that. Um, in the escape and evasion world where we teach uh, anti-kidnapping classes and things of that nature, um, your ability to disable uh, the vehicles of the people who capture you once you make your escape is essential and also being able to utilize one of their cars. I mean, if you're, you know, if you just woke up and you, you got out of a, a bad situation like that, I would not be beyond me to steal somebody's car or right. just yeah, kidnap yeah. me. I mean, yeah. I'm no that's problem. Right. That's, a, yeah. that's a point A to point B thought process right there. Exactly. And those, and those kind of things do happen in the world today All that the we time. live in. All you the know? time. I mean, we have a, a plane missing and a Malaysian plane missing. You know, things can go bad. And you being able to pick a lot to get a, a weapon in a terror situation, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Uh, it could even be a, a, a fireman's axe. Yeah. You know, anything. Anything to, to help you. Because when my life is on the line, the rules are going to change a bit. And, and for the people that talk about things, well, I would just beat the door down with my big sledgehammer or my bolt cutters. Um, show me anybody that carries that stuff around right. in, in, a, in a go bag or in a get home bag or anything of that nature. Uh, they're, they're heavy. They're, the chances of you needing them are very slim. But when you do need them, you need them. So... Uh, and that's the thing too, when we talk about lock picking, we're talking about a whole plethora of skill sets that is basically bypassing security. Um, and it's, it's not just lock picking, it's lock picking, it's bypassing, it's shimming. security analysis, it's shimming, it's um, dynamic entry, which would you know fall under your bolt cutters and hooligan tiles and pry right. bars and all that kind of stuff. So I just, uh, that was one of the main feedback things I got from that. Uh, presentation was people talking about, uh, you know, trying to stay a lawful person in an unlawful time. And what you got to think about is you already have an establishment of gangs throughout this country, establishment of organized crime. These people are ruthless, they're determined, they're organized, and they're most times better armed than we are. So with as much stuff that goes on right now, with all the law enforcement we have, how much more do you think they're going to be doing once that law enforcement is not there anymore? So if you think that you're going to be able to abide by the quote unquote laws in a lawless situation, that's, that's pretty good indication that you're not going to make it. Now, what you do have is your own moral compass and I hope people would follow that. And um, we need these skills more so to help other people uh, in their times of need than anything else. It's kind of like people say, you know, they call themselves sheep dogs or whatnot, mm -hmm. and and but I also hear in the same sentence them talking about them going to use an AR-15 and take somebody else's stuff. To to me, I mean, that's a it, it's hard to try to relay what a moral compass is and what people think or should do or not do. There's so many things in the world that attribute to this, so it's 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 hard to you know say hey I I can tell you lay out everything for you. You just need to look at it in your own life. You know, don't take something from somebody else that needs it. Uh, don't harm someone else that doesn't need to be harmed. It's not trying to harm you. You know, all these kind of things got to factor in. But, you know, in an urban survival situation, let's say there's an abandoned building and you need a fortified shelter. You got a, a Cat 5 hurricane coming through and you pick your way into this fortified building. Or you would you rather be in a fortified structure or abandoned building or building a lean-to out in the wilderness? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a no-brainer. So those, those things are all going to play a factor into this kind of stuff. But... I think we pretty much covered it pretty solid, man. And uh, you got anything else to add? No, I just uh, hope you guys practice your skill sets and uh, think about things prior to and you know before you need them. Well, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, and uh, check out BlackSkySurvival.com for more tips and tutorials. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Subscribe to Chance if you haven't subscribed to him. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.